Now the contents okay. begin abruptly, like the early pages are no longer part of it. They read like brief passages about historical musings, piecing together elements of Eor's history, mental notes over breakfast by a confounded arcanist, questions they posit to themselves about where it might lie, what secrets made it so dangerous to call the ire of the gods down upon it at the height of the calamity, details of odd recovered relics from around the frigid depths surrounding Isilcross, and the theories that they have that elements of Eor might actually be found there. Half-finished sketches follow that of assumed Aeorian architecture, uh, discussions of the convocation of Aeor, the committee of mages that governed the ancient city, pontificating about their politics and whether they were indeed a unified people, as some archivists suggest. The notes then continue, like a travelogue, making themselves the briefest of entries regarding their journey northward. So not unlike the Nine's own journey through here, it discusses the harshness of the environment, the dangers that beset them. There's no mention of Balin Post and no other societal handholds up here in the north, really. It's just desolate, uncharted tundra. And honestly, deadly mystery. There are numerous gripes about magic being unpredictable up in this space and numerous times and odd creatures that had to be avoided on this journey. Very much kind of gives you the sense of like an early explorer first coming into uncharted land. Eventually, the entries begin to speak of a massive anomaly that they came across, a patch of frost that's miles long, and it piques his curiosity. More entries beyond that briefly note his entrance to a subterranean labyrinth of corridors and structures, sketches of door reliefs and archways and long dead bodies left frozen. One perfunctory entry speaks of an uncovered text hurriedly scrawled before the death of its writer. It reads, The philosophers abandoned us. The cursed, plodding dreamers took their whole ward with them. Cursed. Curse them. May they rot in. And it ended there. May they rot in? In yeah. and ended there. The following entries muse out the meaning of this statement, slowly exploring more of the ruin and trying to piece together their goings on. Even further entries still speak of the sounds that worry the mage. Things are living down in these halls, he says. He notes his need for caution. Eventually, an entry speaks of finding information about some of the Aeorian wards, the Peresidis ward, the Ars ward. Ars, A-R-S. P R A E S I D I S Ward. Paracides. Ars Ward. Ars Ward. And in particular, the Cognosa Ward. A region organized by nine philosophers who are dedicated to the ideas of manifestation through dream and imagination with the conduit of Arcana. Increasingly obsessed with the astral plane and many of its denizens being able to forge matter from sheer will and idea alone. They were rumored to be plotting a succession, or a secession from the convocation to abscond from the city to their beloved plane of dreams and ash, as it said in some of the notes of other Aeorian denizens that seemed to be speaking down on these philosophers. The next entry seems to tremble with excitement and discovery, as the mage intends to project himself into the astral plane and seek out any survivors who, based on his findings, may have escaped. Then, the book changes dramatically. The following pages are filled top to bottom page with nonsense, deep scratches of ink and shapes and symbols that make no sense, just hash marks and scratches and designs that overlap and twist. It is just a mess of designs and nothing. They have no unknowable no purpose or, or reason to them. There's no language, there's, there's hints of text, but it's not and your spell can't focus. It's it's not able to make out any language at all, because it's not language. It's filled with nightmarish design and incredibly detailed patterns that catch your eye on a smaller and smaller scale. These fractals that almost draw you in, that you catch yourself leaning into the pages a bit, and then kind of pull back for a moment and blink and for a second, you catch yourself wondering like how much time has passed, how long you've been looking at that page. Just at that point, Lucian closes the book and goes, I think it's enough reading for now. 
So, what did you think? Caleb and Beauregard. Oh, because you looked. Through the challenging wrestling to night what? and sleep, the book. as darkness awaits you in that place of dreams, you find yourself in a cold, dark space. <laughs> you kind of, you remember kind of nodding off, but now you're here, like conscious, it feels. And you kind of look around in this darkness. Do we see each other? Yeah, are we aware of no, each other? No, you are unaware of each other. Oh, fuck. And this faint red glow begins to warm in front of you, like a tiny tinder flash that begins to burn into a bright flame. Until there before you, you see a massive glowing red eye that just peers into you, inspecting you, piercing you, looking around, to you, within you. No words, no language. You immediately feel this kind of sense of fear and, and, and odd desperation, but it begins to subtly pull away as you feel it connect to you. Like a single thought enters your mind, like the light seems to swarm and fill your space. And all it says is, without language but feeling, emotion, Welcome. 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 And you hear this faint sound, this humming, like thousands of bees buzzing. And as you listen, you begin to see sh scratches, shapes, flashes of the pages that you had looked at in that tome. And it's not buzzing. Their voices, their screams, hundreds, thousands of them, just faintly out of view. Welcome. The eye closes. And you wake up, both, shooting up at the exact same time within the chamber. <laughs> Catches your attention for it immediately. That's rare. I grab my notebook. Mm -hmm. I start trying to copy as much as I could from memory. Okay, you start writing it down. Uh, what do you? What do you do? Shut up! Shush! 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 Sh sh That's not good. You feel that fractal pull within the page, this vertigo still kind of lingering after the dream that you both had independently experienced. As Bo's like sketching in the book and kind of holding it in front of her, Kayla, make a perception check. And I wanted to ask also if I think back to what we looked at, which is a hazy, but does it make any more sense? Yeah. <clears throat> perception, you said? Yes. Open. Up! 18. 18. As you're looking over towards Beauregard and she's sketching, you see the back of the hand that's holding the book. <gasps> A single red eye. <gasps> she's just drawing. And she's unaware. Seemingly. Nothing. Stop. What? I take her hand and twist so that hers is on top of the back facing up. On the back of your left hand, you see an identical red eye in the skin to Lucian's. <gasps> yeah, yeah, I know. Come here, come here, come here. Turn around. I look where the tattoo on her neck is. Are there any more? No. 
I look at your neck. Nothing. Your arms. He had one on his arm. Gotta check the gooch. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. That's the last place you look. We just wake up Caleb butt ass naked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bo's like. The some of them's like, oh, this was a bad idea. I'm sitting there holding the stuff. Who's the worst the watch? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, I do actually. Um, Ichabod Crane just pulls off his his shirt, and I just start looking at like bare chest and arms to see everywhere, and turning yeah, around in yeah, front of Beauregard board. Around. As Caleb's pulling back his robes, you can see on the right shoulder, just above where the bicep and deltoid meet, you see a, a similar single red eye. Ha 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 ha. The rest of you begin to come to hearing the shifting and ruckus and conversation, and the tension in the room is immediately accessible to you. Wish I had that spell now. Does it feel like anything? No. Though strangely warm. I look down at my notes. What did I draw? You can see, you, you, you recall like writing your dream, the words of it, and you look down at the page again, and it is just scratches and lines and nothing. <laughs> oh boy. What happened? And that's where we're gonna pick oh, up. Oh, no! Oh. <laughs>